12 o'clock and time for the Melvin Spears Show on Way Back Wednesday on KGRM 91.5 FM. Coming up this hour, we're going to have a talk with Coach Rusty Ponton of the Women's Basketball Program. We're going to talk about the upcoming all con game and also the Bayou Classic. But right now, we're going to go straight to the phone lines and talk with the uh, chairman of the Eddie Robinson Museum uh, Commission, Mr. John Belton. He's going to tell us a little bit about uh, what's going on with the Eddie Robinson Museum. John, uh, thanks for calling. Uh, thanks for uh, joining us on the show today. Well, thank you, Ray, and uh, I'm, I'm excited to be a part of the program. Okay, John, uh, take us back a little bit and tell us a little bit about a brief history of the Eddie Robinson Museum, how it started, the, the, the thought of it started up until this point. Well, in 1999, the uh, Louisiana legislature enacted a bill uh, recognizing the accomplishments of Coach Eddie G. Robinson and I thought it was fitting to display his, uh, his award, his accomplishments, uh, and the man who he is, a great American, uh, a great legendary coach, uh, but most importantly, a family man and an educator. Okay, will he, uh, I know we had a big event that, that happened this weekend in New Orleans. Tell us a little, about, a little bit about that. Well, as you well, well know, Ray, uh, in the past year or so, we've we have been raising funds for the museum uh, regionally and locally. Uh, we have not initiated a campaign on a, on a nationwide and statewide basis. So the purpose of the press conference this past weekend was to launch our state and national uh, fundraising campaign and also make aware, make the public aware of our efforts and what we accomplished in the past a uh, year and a half, and also to inform the public as to what we have planned uh, for the future. Now, it was a star-studded event. Tell us a little bit about the people who were in attendance and were able to speak at this uh, press conference. Ray, it was truly a blessing. Uh, God reigned on uh, the museum efforts, and um, I, I, I must say that it could not be a success without the effort of everyone involved uh, one, the uh, commission itself, the Friends of the Eddie G. Robinson Museum, headed by uh, the legendary coach, uh, who will go into the Hall of Fame, uh, I think, if I'm not mistaken, in December or January uh, in the near future. Uh, it's been a, a team effort all along, and everyone has just been tremendous in putting forth, including yourself, right, putting forth the effort to make this a success. Um, but at, at the press conference, um, as I said, God reigned on the press conference and the efforts itself. We had in our presence uh, the governor, Kathleen Blanco, uh, the Secretary of State, Jay Darden, uh, who was the newly elected mayor of Shreveport, Jamie Mayo, who is the mayor of Monroe. We had our local legislator who, by the way, did a phenomenal job at the press conference, uh, Ricky Gallo. Uh, we had uh, U.S. Congressman candidate Karen Carter, president um, Many others that I just can't name. It was just a uh, a wonderful event. Of course, the CNN and uh, uh, television uh, uh, personality Garrett Morris, who was a New Orleans native, he was present and shared some words with, with us. Um, it's very promising, and everyone there, including Governor, including uh, Richard Gallo, and the uh, committed themselves to the museum and also committed themselves in trying to. Uh, this year, trying to uh, approve uh, a budget of at least five million dollars to make sure that the museum um, becomes a reality. Now, the we recently launched a website that people can go to and find out more information about the Eddie Robinson Museum effort. Uh, what is that? What is that uh, email address and that, that domain name, John? Um, the email is well, the, the web the website address is www.robinsonmuseum.com. And um, I would I would encourage the listeners to go to it to view the spot. There's a there's a, a lot of information on the website, and there is also a page where you can donate through PayPal. Um, this was set up by our, our official fundraiser Dave Wenham uh, from the state of Ohio, and he did an excellent job at putting this piece together as well as putting the conference together down in New Orleans. And and I I, I like to add to we we also ran. I was in the New Orleans area doing the Bayou Classic. I know a lot of the viewers in this area did not see it, but it did run in the New Orleans market. We ran a public service announcement, and on that public service announcement, 
I'm like looking there, but Joe Tano is the coach, one of the winningest coaches in college football history. Uh, also, the famous Doug Williams from Brown State University, Super Bowl MVP from the Washington Redskins, and also president of the NCAA Athletic Association, also on that public service announcement. So, um, you know, not not just to mention the comment that just to turn on Doug Williams and the president of the NCAA, uh, that, that, that in, in, in of itself speaks volumes uh, of the man, Coach Eddie Robinson. Billy, you know, uh, you know, all those individuals that have basically been involved with the fight sometimes certainly is not in the fitting for a guy that's been 57 years in one institution and, and had an opportunity to really be the mentor of so many young men, not only young men, but uh, Coach Eddie Robinson was a major feat, a major statue in America. A whole lot of other folks looked up to him and drew from him from a lot of different perspectives. So certainly it's, uh, it's a long time coming, and I'm just so happy, and I'm, I think I'm really blessed not only to be a part of the organization, but I'm really blessed to continue to carry on the legacy of Eddie Robinson. And, Coach, you said it best. Uh, one of the things that stick out like something about Coach is that he graduated 80% of his athletes. I mean, that's, that's what it's all about. At the end of the day, is, you know, it's education. And, um, and he, he is a, a big part. John, there are some other people that are going to be seen on the public service announcement. Tell us a little bit about those people who are going to be involved in that. Well, um, to name a, a few others, uh, President Bill Clinton, former President Bill Clinton, um, and a few other names that I probably should not say. They have uh, somewhat uh, tentatively committed, so I would not want to uh, put their names out there without uh, getting their full commitment. But that's just the start. Okay, now that's the that number, uh, the website for the Eddie Robinson Museum is robinsonmuseum.com, and uh, there's also a number that can be called 1-866-WINS-408. That's 1-866-WINS-408. Uh, John, could you tell us a little bit about the, the structure that we are in the process of acquiring for the Eddie Robinson Museum? The uh, structure uh, that, that you're speaking of is the... Um, women's Memorial Gym that is situated on the campus of Graham State University. Uh, with the insight and help of Graham State University President Horace Jetson, um, he is committed and uh, also made a presentation to the University of Louisiana system last month along with Coach Wilbert Ellis um, in, in, at that meeting that was held in Monroe and, um, and committed to the site for the permanent site um, for the Eddie Robinson Museum. Um, it, we also have uh, embarked on, uh, in the next few months, we will embark on designing the interior of the museum as well as fundraising. And we have hired a, an interior designer, Murphy and Orr, out of uh, Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, they do wonderful work. Um, in fact, they've done work for Auburn University, Alabama University, and, and the like. So I think we have a great team in tech, uh, again, with the commission, and Coach Spears is on the commission, and he's been a wonderful, wonderful help in terms of putting together, as well as yourself, Ray, both of you, I think, just by yourself, put together a temporary museum with the help of also Nick Will. Um, and, and, and we just thank you for your efforts. And we have a wonderful team. Everyone's committed. Uh, I don't think there's anyone that's ever said no to anything. And so with, with that type of teamwork, um, this thing will become a reality in the near future. You're listening to the Melvin Spears Show on KGRM 91.5 FM. On the phone with Attorney John Belton, the chairman of the Eddie Robinson Museum Committee. Uh, John, tell us some of the other members that are part of the committee. Um, well, no way. We have uh, Coach uh, Porter, who is our, 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 the vice chair of the commission. We have Coach Spears, who is uh, present with you. Uh, we also have Barbara McIntyre, who's our secretary. Uh, we have Mayor Andrus, uh, the mayor of Gramlin, uh, the city. Excuse me, <clears throat> the mayor of the city of Gramlin. We also have uh, President Jetson on the commission. Uh, we also have um, the athletic director Troy Matthews, um, and um, a number of others. I, I can't think of everybody offhand. We have a representative of the office of Secretary of State. Uh, Taylor Jackson. Uh, also, we have a uh, Robinson Commission. I mean, I'm sorry, uh, Friends of Eddie Robinson Museum Organization, which is a separate nonprofit entity. That is, we we use the raise funds. The commission is a part of the 
the state and we're appointed by the governor. Coach Robert Ellis is the president of the Friends of the Eddie Robinson Museum organization. So he has all fundraising efforts and, and unfortunately he was not able to be with us at the press conference because uh, as my understanding his mother is, is ill in the hospital and so he's, he's by her side. Um, we, we have a, a number of members to, on, on the committee for the Friends of the Eddie Robinson Museum organization. Uh, and I can't name all of them, but it's quite a bit, maybe over 20. But every, everybody is uh, pitching in and helping to make this museum a reality. We're on the phone with uh, John Belton, the uh, president of the Eddie Robertson Museum uh, Commission. And uh, the number, I, I should say the website, robertsonmuseum.com is one you can go and check out some things about uh, Coach Robertson and the effort that we're putting forth in order to honor him uh, fittingly with a museum where all the world can come and visit and take part in and be proud of as Gramlinites and Americans. John, I'd like to thank you for joining us on the phone today. And we look forward to hearing from you and more great things with the Eddie Robertson Museum Commission. Thank you, Ray, and thank you for the beer. Appreciate you. Coach, uh, you know, big game this weekend. We're going to jump right into it. Let's, let's start with preparation. This is the first time we've had about three weeks uh, prior to the Bayou Classic to play a game. Tell us what goes into the preparation, preparing for a game with three weeks away. Well, mainly what we try to do is just come in and look at all the little things that we had not been doing look at all the different situations within the ball game and look at how the, what their alignments, what their matchups were basically going to be. And our guys had an outstanding three weeks of practice. Uh, certainly, we came in the ball game knowing everything about Southern University. We and we knew it was going to be a, a dog fight. You're going to have to make some adjustments in the ball game. But the main focus was that mainly just keep the game close and at the end we get an opportunity at the end, we could win it at the end. And certainly it played out just that way. Unfortunately, we just came up short. Okay, in the locker room prior to coming out, what was your pregame speech like? Our pregame speech was really to just expound upon the significance of the Bayou class being back at home in New Orleans, that the Bayou class is really a much larger task than just playing football. It's an event that really where you have families and social uh, social events that goes on. But this was very, very special. And the reason why this one was so special is the fact that we had an opportunity to come back home and the fact that we were having the Bayou Classic at this time was a, another way of us showing how we could help our fellow man bring revenue back to the city of reconstructing the new New Orleans, Louisiana. So certainly uh, the records all went out, but the support from our event really helped in toward get, being able to rebuild New Orleans. And I thought that was a major point with respect to it. And, and the guys know this is a national event. This is your time to be have the opportunity to showcase your talent. And certainly to play Grambling football for 64 minutes, we played very well in spots and then in spots we didn't. We struggled sometimes, but the main thing is that we knew it was going to be that kind of ball game. We were there. We had enough enough at the end to win it, but we just didn't get it out, didn't get it done. Coach, the uh, coming down, the trip down from New Orleans, uh, did the team get a chance to see any of the, the, uh, the ambiance around New Orleans coming to New Orleans, any of the devastation that was left over from Hurricane Katrina, Greta? Well, you know, one of the things about being here at Grambling State University that makes it very special in any place that, that I've ever been to is the fact that we had an opportunity to take our team on the tour of the Lord Name Board to, just to get them to understand the significance, how important it really was, and that this was a serious, serious matter when you look at all the devastation and things that occurred over the Lord Name Ward area. And for our, most of our fans to be up out of there, some of them was family members and things of that nature that has consistently been ongoing throughout we just wanted to get them a feeling you know we started down the trail and it was a little talking all of a sudden when we got down on St. Claude Street you could almost hear a whisper that everybody was just sitting there in awe when you look at all the houses that are torn down you look at all the different markings that are on the house it was just unbelievable and it was it was just it was just sad and simply because of the fact that we know it's going to be a long haul before we can get that portion of the city rebuild again and then just to have the opportunity to play in the Bayou Classic and add revenue says a whole lot about it. Certainly a lot of times you talk about winning and losing but this was a game that I think it boils down to certainly well we're disappointed about losing but the bottom line is sometimes it's not about whether you win or lose it's how you play the game and I thought the game was a great TV game and it went down to the last play and if you're a little boy in the street you always want to be down 17-14 with it in your hand and have the opportunity to win. And uh, We just did it. I'd like to 
not much, not so much view, you know, knowing what I think the, the CBD of, uh, of New Orleans saw the remnants of Hurricane uh, Katrina and Rita and, and you know, buildings still not open. The Ritz Carlton was one of them. A lot of the, the hotels were not available. A lot of the restaurants, a lot of them, a lot of them not fully open. Some of them uh, working on short hours because of the short man hours and, and people were not available to work. Uh, we're going to go to the phone, phone lines at 274-4487. Carl, you have a question? Uh, not a question, just a comment. Sure, uh, go it ahead. might evolve into a question. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, you know, um, I, uh, my name is Ben Williams. Okay. I'm from Grambling. I'm Grambling I called him once before. But, uh, you know, I really think if our team, if, I mean, if our coaches knew better, they would do better. You know, uh, Grambling football, for instance. You know, Grambling football <clears throat> is not waiting to be in the fourth quarter. Grambling football is coming out, you know, and kicking butt early in the first quarter and giving, you know, the Grambling fans a chance to socialize with old acquaintance, knowing that the game outcome is not in question. It's, it's not... It's not going on the field as a coach, as a coaching staff, and not knowing the rules which you're playing on them. Specific incident that I give reference to is, uh, you know, when they were questioning the officials about the about the new line of scrimmage, you know, and if you did know uh, and was just testing the officials' intelligence, then that's not the ground in football. And 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 uh, just a couple other things. Now, when when you when you're starting offensive, when two starting offensive players are having serious disagreements during the game, and no coach on your staff recognizes it or try to intervene to squash it, that's not grounded football. And 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 another thing that really I, that really kind of disturbed me was that. You know, when you're getting hyped up for a game and, and you, you know, you're putting on your game face and the last thing that you say or do is something that's supposed to be directing you or pointing you toward victory, not submissive anything, not like me on, like a little cat. That is not, you know, that is not, you, you're a tiger, you're not a cat. And it's the coach's uh, last say as to what they're going to say before they go on the field. And... Before I go, I guess I guess my number one problem that I that can't I can't come to grips with is you cannot bring a first year a one year removed player who has had quarterback issues with this specific team and, and putting him uh, as good as the kid is to 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 decide which plays which quarterback uh, will play when. Which plays you run with each one of them in there, and and, uh, and 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 you know he he wore the headset nobody else wears in the headset. Now he is the player once removed. He had a lot of you know, and I don't know this kid personally, but we everybody know he had a lot of discipline problems as far as with his weight when he was a player. And how can all of a sudden he can gain so much discipline in one year? that he could run your entire football team. Okay, well, uh, Mr. Williams, I really appreciate the uh, the comments that you made, but certainly you don't have all the data, and you certainly don't don't have the information with respect to some of the things that you're basically saying. And certainly when you talk about grambling football, we talk about playing grambling football for 64 minutes. If you had an opportunity to evaluate the individual that basically participate for us, then maybe you might have another outlook on what you're saying. But in the meantime, uh, we're basically going to do the things that we need to do in order to get Grambling ready. We're going to go out and we're going to make certain that we bring in some other guys to go along with some outstanding individuals that we have. But on the other hand is that, you know, we talk we talk to talk, but the question is whether or not can we walk the walk. You're a guy that's been here at Grambling for quite some time, and certainly I appreciate that. But in the fact of being here at Grambling, when you talk about coaches, when you talk about uh, buildings, when you talk about programs, you know, the thing is that I always ask one thing. I can sit and listen to a whole lot of everybody, as long as you're paying your money, to make certain that we matriculate to another level. And I appreciate it. And uh, another statement I used to make, I wanted to make to that particular caller, we, uh, 
the series is tied with series was tied 16 16. Southern's up 17 16 in the Bayou Classic series. If I'm not mistaken, we've only won uh, three out of the last 14. Absolutely. Last Bayou so, so. so how can how can it be a situation where we can interact with people around the stadium and come out win when we've only won it three out of the last 14? So apparently, we have not won those games. So there was no time for. Um, talking and socializing at these other games that we were particularly in. But on the other hand, when you talk about a guy that was an outstanding football player here, at Grambling, I thought one of the things that Eddie Robinson did more so than anything else was take care of his own. And when we had these young men that graduated, Jermaine Mills, the Byron Browns and all, and we try to infuse them back into our system and to kind of clear up this Bruce Eugene issue. Bruce Eugene doesn't make any decisions about the quarterback. I do. And when the plays are being called, Bruce Eugene is listening to a guy that is relating certain information down to him. I'm on the headset. Coach White and I are responsible for making the calls, and that's the way it's going to be. And if there's any, anything anybody needs to talk about, they need to talk to me. We're listening to the Melvin Spears Show on KGRM 91.5 FM. Uh, we got a caller uh, on the line. Caller with your question for Coach Spears. Uh, good afternoon, Coach Spears. Hey, how are you? Greg Bridges from Monroe, how you doing? How you doing, Mr. Bridges? Fine. I'm very, uh, as I was listening to the show, and I think the listeners need to understand that, and I've said this over and over to people I've talked to them, that nobody loves Grambling football more than I do. Yes, but sir. I come to realize over the years that you're just not going to win every game. not going to win the championship every year. But as I've told you and told others, I come to see you compete. I come to see whether or not Grambling is going to give me 100%. And this year has been a disappointing year for us. I watched the guys play, and we lost some ball games, very close ball games. And I talked with guys from other schools, from other spike schools, who would love to have been as school the ground and have won, and surely would have won four out of the last six spike championships. The last four or five years that Coach Raw was there, and I told you this before, very disappointing years that, and you guys have brought the pride back. You can look at the last five you classic. He was the one that we didn't win, we competed. And long as Bramley competes, and you put guys on the field that give us 100%, and Ben knows this, and I know this, Ben played baseball, I went to high school with him, he was an All-American baseball player, but we didn't win every game. Ben knows that. Ben is supposed to Bramley. Baseball, they didn't win every game. And it's sad that you want to get ahead of the game and go and socialize with people. But many people think you haven't played the sport before. In and out the league, what's his thought and what's his dream, Mr. Bridges, because it really boils down to how you play the game. It's not about all the time winning and losing. And certainly, we're about winning that ground, but you got to play 64 minutes Tiger football. We'll be back with a uh, phone interview with Coach Rusty Ponton after the break on the Melvin Spear Show, way back Wednesday on KGRM 91.5 FM. We're back with the Melvin Spear Show on KGRM 91.5 FM. I'm your host, Ray Higgins. Alongside Coach Spears, uh, we're going to go to the phone lines and our special <laughs> phone guest calling us from the airport, Coach uh, Rusty Ponton of the Women's Basketball Program. How's it going, Coach? Hey, Ray, how's it going? What's up, Coach Spears? How you doing, man? I'm hey, hanging, man, hanging. Now, hanging. What, what airport are you calling us from, Coach? We're well, calling you from Atlanta right now. I, really, in truth, I don't know where I'm at. Um, I don't know what day it is, what time it is. <laughs> I just follow the group. Okay, Coach, take us back a little bit to last year. Tell us how we ended up. Uh, for, for those people who are listening that don't know, tell us how we kind of ended up our season and some of the players that uh, we lost through the graduation. Well, last year, you know, it was a disappointing year for us. You know, we did have a young team. We had 10 freshmen on that team. And we had a lot of little nagging injuries uh, throughout the year that kind of hampered us throughout the year. Uh, had some chemistry problems. We thought we got, you know, at the, toward the end of the year, we got those things kind of handled. 
Um, got into the tournament. Actually started playing much better towards the end of the year. Got into the tournament and lost to the eventual uh, Swag Tournament champion and the regular season champion, Southern University. We actually had that team beat twice last year. We lost to them in a heartbreak at that place, and we beat them handily at our place. So we felt that we were, we were a, a couple of players away from winning the championship last year, uh, a little chemistry away and a lot of youth away. So um, that's how we ended up last year. We felt much better about this year. We realized that a lot of those players that we had uh, from last year didn't feel a lot of time um, last year. They are coming and trying to feel their way through this year. And Coach Beers will tell you about that chemistry. When you don't have that chemistry down and that, 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 that leader, that quarterback in place who's confident about what he's doing, it makes it real, real tough for the rest of the, for the offense getting things accomplished. So through this year right now, we're winning this um, up until this point. Um, see some very good positive things happening though. Um, we played some very good teams. We went up to Ann Arbor and played a, um, a very good Morehouse team that, that was um, picked to finish second in the CIAA. They have the player of the year there in that center there. Um, we turned around and we played against a, a, a real gritty, tough UNO team. Great game. We ended up losing the game by 12, but it was a four-point game with two minutes and something left in the game. I think our kids played well there until our little point guard, um, Cass Hawkins, got hurt in that game. Um, came back home to Chicago State. We had a disappointing setback in Chicago State. Came out the world against the team, but then we kind of like just filled us up the end. Um, left there, still on the road now. He left there, came back to the Southern Miss tournament. Uh, we played the uh, University of Southern Miss at their place. And um, I, played, I think we played, we played decent there, but when, when the team makes more free throws than you shoot, you're not going to do very well in a situation like that. When you're on the road, uh, turned around and played a Louisiana Tech team. Uh, I actually was down by 11 points with four minutes and something left in the game. So our kids really came out and played hard. We were kind of undermanned. Again, we had some injury problems. We got a couple of kids who were, and it was late to the second game back. She did a phenomenal job in those games. Well, the main thing, Coach, I know it's always boils down to chemistry, as you know. When you lose outstanding players to go back and forth, it takes a little time. But the main thing is that I know – you know, you guys play that 40 minutes of hell, and that's really what it's all about. That's the equivalent to 60 minutes of Tiger football, and certainly I know you're going to keep getting at them and keep going, and certainly we look forward to it, and I just really appreciate you, you being on the show and just letting all our fans know where we are and the things that we're doing, not only in football, but particularly in basketball as well. But I tell you, because we were real proud of you guys. We, we were, man, we were fighting and watching the game, trying to catch the game. We actually played. We started out, our tip-off time was at 12 o'clock uh, in that game, and we, at right at halftime, we turned on the TV dressing room to catch the game, and then we, we were fortunate to have a party bus that was there right on us, so we had actually got a chance to watch you guys on TV. I was real proud of the effort that our kids made. You know and I know it's a game of inches, so we have been that game over, you know. So uh, we were real proud of the effort that our kids gave, and uh, we were real proud of you, Coach. Appreciate it. You listen to the Melvin Spears Show on KGRM. Our online guest is Coach Rusty Ponton. Coach, you lost some seniors. Uh, tell us a bit about how you went about trying to replace those seniors. Well, um, we lost them. It's kind of the uh, The kid was a phenomenal athlete, phenomenal player. She's at in Italy playing right now. Uh, we lost Natasha, uh, 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 Natasha Wilmore, who was one of those kids that does all the dirt work for you, and gets in the in the in the grime and the grit, and you know down the low post, and you know did a lot of things for us. And we lost another senior uh, who. The big Amber, she didn't play a whole lot of minutes, but she was kind of like the mother figure to a lot of these younger players. And now we're asking some of our kids who are seniors now, they're calling me, uh, 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 um, um, Sonora Cole. The kids like that to kind of step up and kind of fill in those roles. So, uh, Dominique Head. So, uh, right now, you know, they're trying, they're trying to get the chemistry together. You know, we keep pushing them. Look, this is the first part of the season. You gotta keep working hard. You gotta keep coming at it. And you can't let the fact that we've had, if we have any disappointing losses now, Keep us from our final and ultimate goal of winning the track uh, championship. Well, Coach, just to kind of expound about when you think about, talk about the leadership role that those players that play, played on your team that are, are no longer there, opposed to the folks that basically were the follow. Just give us a, a synopsis about this leadership. I think leadership on the team is the most valuable commodity that we have in order to, to be the coaches on the field, the ride herd on the troops, and do the little things that you're asking them to do. And uh, certainly we've had our problems with them from a football nature, but just talk about the leadership aspect of it. Well, Coach, you know and I know, Coach, coaches cannot get on that field and play for you. When you've got that leader, that, 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 that coach on the field who has the door to go up and, 
and put his hands on the player, uh, just as we did, coach, put, put your foot in their, in their tail, so to speak, and say, come on, let's get it done. That's invaluable. You know, and right now we're looking for that person. I think um, Lacey Cormier was a very emotional game last night for her. Her brother, who was critically injured in uh, Iraq, was scheduled to come to the game. He's up in Bethesda, uh, Maryland now, having his, like, eighth operation because he, he lost his nose, his eyes, his arm. He has a prosthetic arm. And he, he drove two and a half, three hours to get to that game. Unfortunately, he didn't make it to the game in time to see us play because they went to the wrong place. But he did make it to the game. The kids got a chance to see him and see what he's going through from a physical standpoint and realize that, hey, if this guy can, can come out of surgery, you know, less than a week ago to try to make it see his sister play, you know, she had tears in her eyes, we had tears in our eyes. And I think it really kind of touched them in the stand, from the standpoint of, hey, you know, people make a lot of sacrifices to get us where we are right now. And uh, and that's one of those sacrifices. So we're looking for it. I think she kind of stepped up. Lacey played a phenomenal game last night, and I think she's going to step up and be that leader that we're looking for. You're listening to the Melvin Spears Show. I'm uh, on the phone with Coach Rusty Ponta. Coach, what's next for the for the Lady Tigers? Oh, thank you, Jesus. We're coming home. We're coming home. <laughs> we got we got a three-game uh, home stand at home. We're going to try to lick our wounds a little bit, get some people healthy. Um, we got some kids back at home who were injured, keep people for us who are back out right now. Hopefully we'll have them back for this three-game stretch, uh, take care of our finals, um, go ahead and get our kids situated with that, and then get on the road again the last um, three games before we start conference. Uh, we're really looking for, we're really, really looking forward to getting home. You know, we've been on the road basically on and off for the last two weeks. We've been on the road for six games. And, uh, and and it's especially difficult when you're on the road with a young young group of kids. But I think the exposure has really, really helped them. Has helped them realize that how tough it is out here on the road and how tough you got to be when you come home. So I think that's going to help us uh, realize that home is heaven for us. Coach, are there any surprises? Are there any players that have stepped up their game and surprised you and, and have, have exceeded your expectations? Yeah, we have we have a couple of young kids. Uh, Rochelle Bessard, she's a... A walk-on kid is actually has a, uh, a track scholarship, and we call her six five. She's only uh, <laughs> she's about five seven five eight playing the post, but she's a bulldog. Coach, you can put her down there that nose tackle. She, I guarantee you, coach, she gonna block up a hole somewhere. She's <laughs> one of the ones that that gets in there that you just gotta love. Coach, come to work every day. Don't say anything. Just give me, you know, let me do what I do. That kind of thing. And we got another freshman. You know, this this, this kid is still coming in for us. And uh, Cassandra Anderson, and uh, she's going to be a player coach. She's still trying to feel her way around, but we were real, real pleased with the development of those kids coming on being because they're going to be some factors once we get in the conference. Are there any, any injuries other than two pairs that uh, of note that we have to uh, look out for? Yeah, well, Rashad has a knee strain right now. She has a meniscus strain. Um, we got um, Jalen Stevens, the kid who's projected to be our starting two guard, and we're missing that a lot in the two guard position right now. She's actually back at home. She has a uh, strained muscle in her foot, but they're trying to evaluate, see what's going on with that. Um, we also have another big kid back home who has been five kids, Coach Steele around, Coach B. Salivate, like Coach Steele, and you see big, uh, <laughs> the big one walking around campus, you know, she's back, but she's coming back off a knee injury also, so uh, we got some key people that we think are going to be able to help us, that once we get healthy, um, we're going to be we're gonna be something to reckon with. Coach, I know you can't pick a favorite player, but I can. Uh, how's, how's Shaw doing? I tell you what, she is playing consistent, consistent. This kid has given us 10 points, 8, 9 boards every game in solid defense. I tell you what, uh, Ray, this kid went and blocked the kid from Tech Shot uh, um, in the game over there in Southern Miss. And when I tell you, you're talking about, like, I'm coming to get you, that's how it was. I mean, she really put on a show over there against those Tech kids. They're bigger than her, you know, uh, but she got in there and she was really fighting hard. And uh, she let them know that, hey, we don't care where you're from, babe, we're going to play you hard. Coach, we appreciate you uh, contacting us in, on your on the road in Atlanta Airport. Uh, we appreciate the uh, the call, and we also appreciate all the work that you're doing with the Lady Tigers. And, and good luck for you in the next couple of games. And we look well, forward to you coming coach. back home, buddy. Hey, hey, coach, I'll be there on the side with the water, baby. I'll be there. Baby. All right, let's, go get, let's go get them 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 braids, okay? We'll be there back for that thing. All right, now we'll be right back with more of the Melvin Spears Show on KGRM 91.5 FM right after this. Power on KGRM. We're back with the Melvin Spears Show of KGRM 91.5 FM and on the internet. I'm your host, Ray Higgins, and Coach, we've got 
Final game of the season, kind of strange on December, having a game in December other than the championship game. Uh, tell us a little bit about all court. Well, hopefully next year we move this game back further up in the season uh, where we really want it. But the main thing now is just try to get ready for the for the Alcorn Braves coming in here. They got a pretty potent attack. They got some outstanding wide receivers to go along with a real stringent defense. But I think we're going to we continue to evaluate them and do some of the things that we need to do. Uh, our guys had an excellent practice yesterday, and uh, certainly we look forward to them coming down here. And I just want to say, you know, this here is about Grambling State University. It's not about Melvin Spears. It's not about even the guys that play. It's about Grambling. And we look forward to all our fans being here for the beginning of the new season. Well, we've got, uh, we had two, 18,000 for the last two games, average about 18,000 for the last two games. And we have a really good chance of finishing in the top maybe 10 in all Division One double And we can only do that if the, the fans come out. And, you know, again, like I said, it's not about Coach Spears, but the players who've been here for four years and, and the new players that are here, they've been here and practicing on the road to play football for fans. So it's up to fans and sports no matter who's coaching, whether it's playing, they should be playing or whatever. It's about Grambling, it's about the players. So we want everybody to come out for that game. It's a 1 o'clock start time. If I'm it's a uh, 1 o'clock start time. I just want to uh, reiterate the fact that it's the last, uh, the last time our seniors going to have an opportunity to play down there in Robinson Stadium. They've been outstanding in the last five years, and most of our seniors are either are graduated or they've won a national championship. And right now we have eight young men that are on our team right now that have already graduated to go along with the other six or seven that we have, and all of them graduated. By May, I think our whole class that puts us still right between 90% and 100% of our guys are still graduating. Every day, really about. What do you expect from the Alcorn team? Been up and down. They've had some, you know, they weren't expecting one, some they didn't win, but one. Uh, tell us, you know, what kind of Alcorn team do you expect? Well, we're going to expect their best effort because everybody that we participate against is going to bring their A game. And it's, it's been shown for 10 weeks, until we tell week in, week out, that you can expect the very best. And I think it's not going to be any difference that we went to their place last year. And I uh, whipped them up pretty well, and then you know they're going to come in here with this revenge. I think that the big thing is that they're going to come in, going to work hard, and play for 60 full minutes. For the guy they called in early, it's really about playing 60 full minutes of Tiger football, and that's really all about it. And it's based on the evaluation process of the kinds of players that you have, and I think our guys are going to be up for the test. You listen to the Melvin Spears Show on KGRM. 91.5 FM. We are taking your calls at 318-274-4487. That's 318-274-4487 for any questions that you might have for Coach Spears. Uh, Coach, speaking of the seniors, uh, we've got some pretty good ones that are not going to be with us on the team next year. Tell us you know, about those. Well, on the offensive side of the ball, we really, at the, at the wide receiver position, we're only going to lose one guy, Henry Tarver, who's been a major part of our offense for quite some time. Henry is a, a record setter. He has uh, broke the record of the most touchdowns caught in the season, and he has a couple other things that he is chasing with respect to Scotty Anderson and Tron Douglas. But on the offensive we're going to an all conference down the but Jamar Darcy, and all these individuals that I'm talking about right now have already graduated. Derek Dunner, who's graduated already to go along with Jamar Darcy, who's graduated, Andre Bennett, and Al Corn, who's really been our tailback for quite some time. All these young men are basically going to be off the offense, but the most significant part, they all have their degrees. They've all done an outstanding job while they were here, and uh, I wouldn't expect anything else from them once they go back out in the corporate America. They certainly got the survival kit that we set out to get them prepared to do when they leave here. And speaking of uh, records you, you mentioned about Henry was chasing, currently, as far as Grambling history is concerned, and this is official and official, uh, Henry Tolbert has 3,043 receiving yards, which puts him 139 behind Scotty Anderson. So he needs 140 to surpass uh, Scotty Anderson, the great uh, wide receiver from Jonesboro Hodge that was here from 98 to 2000. And as far as uh, receptions, he has 178, which puts him 15 behind Scotty Anderson and 19 behind Tremont Douglas, who was who's here in, uh, from uh, 2000 to, to 03. And as far as touchdown leaders, Henry Tolbert has uh, 31 receiving touchdowns which puts him one behind Trumaine Johnson and four behind Scotty Anderson. So uh, he's in great company with those guys. Yeah, absolutely. He's been an outstanding player since he's been here. He came here, a guy that was a very smart guy, made 27, 28 on the ACT test, have maintained a 3.0 plus average in, in the graduation, looking to be a marketing major. I just take my hat off to him because he's participated so well, whether he's a running back whether he's the quarterback and all the other things. But all our seniors 
have really done a great job. You know, Greg Fassett is another guy who graduated with 3.2, 3.3. That's a graduate guy going along with a number of other individuals. Tim Abney, who has another year, is basically going to come back, who's a graduate on our team. So academically, we've done a good job. we just got to keep working on our chemistry, keep working hard to find the right leaders to go along with with an outstanding Grammy team. And we look forward. The program is in great shape. We're going to go out and recruit. Uh, some outstanding guys, off, offensive linemen, defensive linemen, and linebackers, and we probably need to bring in four corners. So we're really already looking at the different criteria of the players that we're going to need to bring in, and we'll be out on the road. We'll go over and see Bastrop Midland this weekend is where I'm basically going to be. All the coaches are going to be out throughout the, the whole area, but it really boils down to recruiting. Recruiting is the sort of your entire program that goes along with an outstanding strength and conditioning. And after we get through beating Alcorn, we'll get ready for, for a boot camp in January. You listen to the Melvin Spears Show on KGRM 91.5 FM. Coach, you talk about the, uh, the, the scenes that you have. What are some of the areas, uh, other, some of the other places, like in linebacker, are we missing out on the linebacker situation? Well, the thing is, it's hard, it's hard to replace a guy like Demetrius Carr, who's really been the heart and soul out of defense for a long time, who's going to an outstanding job. We'll miss him. We'll miss David Hickey, who's another guy that has already graduated to go along with a, a real young group. But we got some young men that are right now here. Our Prop 48 group has 26 outstanding players that we're basically going to reload with. We're going to do a variety of different things when we get ready to, in, in the all season. But right now, we just got to concentrate on those factors. On the other side of the ball, Brian Langford did an excellent job for that safety. Uh, it's a guy that we're really going to miss because he's the guy that are making those calls after the Jermaine Mills to go along with, with a couple more other guys. Bakari Geist plays on the corner, a fast guy that may have some opportunities. So so we have some outstanding players. That, that chemistry and the things that go along with is really about staying focused. It's really about doing all the little things, and when you don't pay attention to detail, uh, it's very, very hard to be successful on the other end. Coach, you talked about earlier uh, in the, uh, the year, you talked about the, uh, the total person concept. Kind of talk a little bit about your the, the total person concept when it comes to Grammy football. Well, our total person concept really starts spiritually, academically, and then athletic. We do so many things when you talk about trying to get our young men to understand the fourfold development. The fourfold development is that we look at them from a social standpoint, we look at them from a physical standpoint, we look at them from a mental standpoint. And if, in fact, we can continue to get them to buy in on their spirit, spirituality, that a lot of these other little problems that they're having really is going to see. So we do a, a very, we do a lot, work, a lot of work in that aspect of it. But we also do a great job trying to get them into the community. Right now, we're going to be going in with a joint venture with Essence to put together a mentorship program. We're going to use 25 of our players to be mentors to some young men that are basically having a problem in the different alternative schools in Lincoln Parish. So that program is really in progress. we got a group that we were basically putting together that's going to go over to the elementary school. It's going to help from a reading standpoint because literacy is always a major part when you think about it in America. But the thing about when you see 900,000 young men that are in prison and 600,000 in, in, in college, we really got to continue to work toward trying to change that that, that percentage, and certainly our guys are doing the things that they need to do, and we got some outstanding young men, and particularly Clyde Edwards, who's 4.0, Brandon Logan, who's doing an outstanding job to go along with a number of others. So, you know, certainly the football program is moving toward what is a community-based kind of team because at Grambling, it is the place where everybody is somebody. You mentioned earlier also about strength and conditioning. How vital a role is strength and conditioning in the program? Right now, I think our student conditioning coach is doing an outstanding job. And, and Robert Butler, we got to certainly get him some more help. You know, he's basically the, the strength coach for all the all the uh, the entities that we have, basketball, football, and the whole nine yards. But in order for us to move our program to another level, certainly we got to pay attention to detail, and we got to go back to boot camp. Boot camp starts January the 20th when they get here, and we're certainly going to be working from that point to get ourselves back in contention of, of running for the championship next year because at Grambling, you don't rebuild. You better reload, and we're certainly going to go out and reload this thing. Now, is, are there any other, uh, looking for the looking for the old seven schedule, are there any games other than the one that we have, which is the uh, Pittsburgh game? Is there any? Right any? now, Pittsburgh has been secured. We are uh, finagling a number of others. We're trying to also fill this slot that we have where we won't have a three-week layoff ran the Bayou Classic time frame. We're going to still try to move all corn back up and see whether or not they want to play at the beginning of the year. Mr. Matthews and I are really 
working at trying to make certain that we put together a schedule that's going to be conducive to our fan base and conducive from a revenue standpoint to make certain that we can balance this budget because, as I tell you, you know, when, when you think about grounding football, you got to think about revenue, and revenue really what makes the institution go, and we look forward to continuing the, the things that Eddie Robinson put in place. You come to Grambling to see the world, and those are the things that we want. We play in Heinz Field, Pittsburgh. We get a chance to still go back to the Bayou Class and a number of other places. So those are the things that we're selling out there on the road, and we look forward to having an outstanding recruiting class. Well, people think that the, the three-week thing was by design, and it was not by design. Absolutely not. It, we were trying to move all corn to the third week because we wanted to get the revenue from the MEAC SWAC Classic that paid much more than what we were going to have at the beginning of the season. So they uh, thought about doing it, and then all of a sudden at the last minute they decided that they really didn't want to move in that slide, and we got kind of caught out. And then the three weeks really didn't hurt us because our team really played a decent ball game. We just didn't close it out at the end, and uh, we got a couple guys back. So it really wasn't that bad. It was just that long, that wait was just too long for us. Well, I'd like to thank Coach Spears and Miss Evans and Miss uh, Collins West for allowing me to host the Melvin Spears Show on KGRM, and it's been fun uh, traveling with the team and and seeing uh, how it works from the inside and getting a chance to uh, see how the heart of those players work day in and day out in the classroom and on the field. And we also want to remind you Saturday at one o'clock again Saturday at one o'clock in Graham Robertson Stadium. There's a football game, Grambling versus Alcorn. Alcorn is a big rival, and they still are a big rival. So we want everyone to come out and support the seniors on Senior Day. The last time you'll be able to see Abquan, uh, Ruben Mays, um, Greg Fassett, Henry Toller, Derek Governor, Derek Andre Governor, Bennett, Andre Bennett, and all those guys. So you know they played well for us for four years. They've got the rings to prove it. So we want you all to come out and, and send those guys off with a big show of support in that game. For Melvin Spears, I am Ray Higgins, and join us again next year for the Melvin Spears Show on KGRM 91.5 FM.